Hello everyone, welcome to our third video uh, on this channel. Uh, my name is Joost and I'm here with Koen. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Silky Pocket Boy. Uh, and it's, we have the 130 uh, version and the 170 version. Um, so Silky is a Japanese manufacturer. Uh, they make folding saws, uh, pole saws and axes as well. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so we start with the design. Um, both of the saws have uh, the Mirai Mi uh, teeth. It means that it are um, non-set teeth and they are laser cutted into the blade. Uh, so it is really smooth when you're sawing. Um, the red one in this case has the um, 13 centimeters blade. The black one is the 170 that is, means that it is 17 centimeters. Uh, there's a little bit difference in the teeth, so this is coarse teeth, that means that it is 80 per th 3 centimeters. Uh, the black one is uh, 10 teeth per 3 centimeters, uh, that is medium. Um, so the black one is suitable for branches up to uh, 85 millimeters and the red one is suitable for let's say 65 millimeters. Um, there's a little bit different in weight, so this uh, is uh, 170 grams and the black one is 210. Um, the red one in this case is more suitable for fresh wood and the black one is a little bit more suitable for hardwood. So to continue with the materials, um, both of the handles has um, a uh, gum handle is what Silky calls it. It is a rubbery texture, so it feels really good, really stable. Um, and the blade is made out of a, a chrome plated blade, steel. Um, nowadays they also make um, nickel coated blades, so that is a little bit better for uh, rust. Okay, so the ergonomics um, are, I think, quite similar. This uh, handle of the 170 is a little bit longer so if you have bigger hands it might be a little bit more comfortable but I still think that uh, also the smaller one uh, is pretty comfortable uh, you can easily uh, reach the well, thing that holds the blade in place don't know what you would call that um, and I think the texture, the, the gum texture as Kun already mentioned uh, is very grippy so there's no uh, chance of you slipping forward or backwards when you're using the saw. Also the fact that you can um, yeah, put it in two different uh, settings uh, makes it more comfortable to use I think because if you are working on a flat surface on the ground or something uh, you can use it in this configuration and otherwise uh, you have the other one. So I think that's great and it does help with the ergonomics. So most of the people will use it for, for use in the garden. Um, but it, there it, it's really suitable for that. You can cut up um, small branches, some bigger branches and it, it's really easy. But you can also use it for uh, bushcraft. Yeah, so because with bushcraft um, you want something to uh, get your firewood for fire. Uh, you want to maybe cut some branches to use for shelter. Um, and those are things uh, I think you uh, see a lot of people use an axe for. And I think uh, axes are also great, but I think this is a much more lightweight option and you can uh, do a lot of things that you normally do with an axe that you can also um, do with a saw like this um, and as I already said yeah, it's, it's much more compact much more lightweight I have here my Letterman Surge that many of you probably know uh, and I think uh, these saws are actually lighter than uh, than the Letterman um, and also some people might have a saw uh, in their pocket knife like in the Victorinox 
like on this Victorinox Ranger. Um, but if you compare the saws, like in length, the, the difference isn't even that big. Um, but because of the teeth and the, well, quality not exactly, but the way this is designed, this is designed to be uh, a saw and a saw only. Um, this is much, much more effective than your uh, normal Victorinox saw. Um, and I think for bushcraft, I would prefer uh, the bigger one because it's a little bit longer and the difference in weight and size isn't that big. So I think um, it's worth it to take the little bit bigger uh, saw with you. So both of the saws come with um, like these cases or seat or whatever you want to call it. Um, they have a belt grip on the back and a hole in the bottom for water or dirt. Um, they are really easy to open like this. You can place them. And then it will look like this. But I think they are not too strong when you are walking into the forest and this is humping into the tree and I think it will break quite easily. Yeah, it's quite plasticky, so it doesn't really give a, give a strong feel. Um, because the blades are not totally stainless, I think it will help uh, with keeping your blade dry. Also, that effect there's a hole in the bottom, I think is good, so water can uh, sip out if you need it to. But I wouldn't carry this on my belt because the plastic is, well, at least feels uh, quite weak. Uh, but I think it's good to use if you're bringing it in your bag. So now we continue with the, the don't likes of the, of the sauce. Um, so the blades are not stainless steel. Uh, however, they are uh, chrome plated. So they are yeah, a little bit rust assist resistant, but not that much. So as you can see, we cleaned a little bit rust over here. You can uh, still see some rust spots between the text because we didn't want to wrap off the text. Here you can see it with a, and some closer to the teeth that we couldn't really clean up that easily. So yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. But when you keep it clean, I think it is. I think it is okay. Yeah. So another thing that I'm well, I wouldn't say that I don't like it, but it's something to think about. Uh, when you're going on a hike. Um, it is much, much lighter and smaller than bringing an axe, but it's still quite a big uh, thing to bring in your backpack. So it will take up a lot of uh, space in your bag. And um, it only has one function. You can only use it as a saw. It's not a multi-tool that you can do a lot of different things with. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing that I'm not a uh, big fan of is that it's not very easy to repair. So um, you can actually uh, take the blade out, but other than that, you can't get in here if something breaks. Uh, there's a little spring in there uh, that like, uh, gives this the springy uh, feel. Um, and if that breaks, it's, it's not easy to uh, fix yourself. So you'd have to send it back for warranty or stuff like that. Um, however, if we're continuing with the things that we do like, uh, if the spring uh, breaks, um, the only thing the spring does is making sure that this is uh, pressing down and uh, locking the saw in its position. So if the spring is broken, you can hold your thumb on here uh, and you will still be able to use the saw um, even when the spring is broken. Um, so yeah, and as I already mentioned, uh, you can also replace the blade. So I think that's good. Um, if, well, for some reason the blade would break, you can replace it or if you would like to have a coarser teeth, um, I think that's great. Another thing we like is that the 130 is, is really easy to clean because of the big teeth. 
Um, so you can see the difference. Uh, we try to clean the 170, but there are still some pieces of wood in the teeth because yeah, they are quite smaller. Um, yeah, so that is a benefit for this one. Uh, and in general, those saws are pretty lightweight. They are around 200 grams, and that is it is is suitable for carrying when you are on a bushcraft or survival. Maybe this one is a little bit too big for in your backpack, but for the weight it is, it's pretty okay. Yeah, so also there's uh, different colors available. Um, the color does however indicate a certain uh, uh, type of blade. So this is the red one is the coarse, then medium is black, and you have also other colors for the finer uh, teeth. Um, but you can swap out the blade, so I think uh, this red color, it's very uh, bright uh, red, so it's very visible if you bring it into the woods, a little more visible than this. Although some people might prefer uh, the black because it's a little more stealthy. So overall I think the quality of these saws is very good. Um, of course Silky is a very uh, well known brand for making these uh, kind of things and it's clear to see why. Um, the design is obviously obviously uh, functional uh, over, well, looking particularly good. I don't think it's very pretty or good looking, but it, it, it looks fine. And I think it's a very functional design, so that's great. And you know the prices, I think, Koon? Uh, yeah, so a little bit more about prices. Uh, the 130 is around uh, 32 euros at uh, knivesandtools.com. And the 170 is around uh, 34, so there's not a big difference. So I think you, like, like, do you want a bigger saw or a smaller saw? There's there's not a big difference between the price. And um, yeah. I think for uh, most people, the bigger one will be the best option because it will perform a little bit uh, better uh, than a smaller one. Although if you uh, really care about the weight uh, or the size in your backpack uh, when you're going on a hike um, the smaller one might be the best option for you um, about the performance we will add some uh, clips of that at the end of this video so um, yeah stay tuned for that yeah so as always if you have any questions or you want to see more just leave a comment in this description we try to respond to every comment that we get. That's of course uh, well, one of the nice things about being a small channel and not having that many uh, subscribers and views yet is that we uh, can really uh, put time in answering your questions if you have any. So please feel free to do so. Now to the clips uh, of the performance and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.